Uh, you know, you're the podcast war. You should be zooming everywhere. Your zoom should be upgraded to gold standard. No shit. Now, this is the like third time it happens. Har- you know, you click on the link. <laughs> it's like, okay, now I'm coming. Oh, down. Har- up- upgrade, update. Like, oh shit. What's up, John? How you oh, doing? No, no, hello, hello, everybody. Uh, how y'all doing? Let's talk real quick. Have you ever seen somebody fucking like a podcast slut like Milos? <laughs> Milos pops up everywhere I go. So, every, every podcast. Every I, I was podcast. like, slinging. I wasn't slinging. terribly familiar with your podcast. So I knew Chris was on it. Then I was like, someone else is on it. And it was Milos. Of course it was Milos. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hey, I swear to God, uh, I, I had to like decline at least like five, six. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. Me, so, so you're doing about six, seven. So you could have been on 14 podcasts. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Take him it's out. a good thing, Milos. I mean, you're like fucking a, a, a great, a great listen, right? People like uh, entertaining. A, so all I mean, hoes, all hoes views. The slut. That's what he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of it, huh? Hey, listen. <laughs> but, uh, hey, but, use what you got. You know. I got to tell you all this though. I am so fucking jet lag. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I, just, I just told Chris. It's it's literally because I know Kylie's in the studio and she's doing this now. I would have I would have canceled. I slept. I left yesterday morning at ten o'clock to Dallas, and then from Dallas to Frankfurt, I didn't sleep. I had three hours on and off, and I've been up ever since. In Frankfurt, I'm staying at the fucking airport to waiting for my bag. Now I fly business, right? You get those fucking stickers. Priority should come out first, right? Should. Sure. Supposed to. I waited two hours for my bag. I'm standing by the fucking belt for two hours. And every 30 minutes, the guy came with the uh, intercom said something like, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but, you know, we short a staff. <laughs> At the airport. This is what they're calling. Been a lot of that. Now. That's so sad. <laughs> huh? Been a lot of yeah. that. Was that an overnight flight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 10 p.m., right? Yeah. No, no, no I, I, left, I left at 10 in the morning, and then I left at, uh, I got to Dallas, and I had an hour and uh, almost two hours in Dallas, and left Dallas like five, five o'clock last night. Okay. And then straight through. It was just a nine hour and 30 minute flight, but usually I, yeah. for nine hours, I sleep eight. But this time, I just couldn't sleep. I took two Xanax, and I think somebody gave me some Oh, bacon. my God. I think somebody gave me fake Xanax. I was in there. <laughs> I said, when is it kicking in? Usually when I the take, other way around. <laughs> usually when I take my Xanax before they give me that the, one, not the that one. <laughs> before they, before they give me that before. Rag to wipe my face, I'm already in the seat like this, sleeping. Oh my God. Man, I flew to I, I, Dubai. I flew to Dubai earlier in the year for a seminar. It was supposed to be, I think it was a 17 hour flight. I'm in, I'm in San Antonio, Texas. So I go to Dallas. Mm-hmm. Missed the flight in Dallas because it was so tight. Um, then we fly to another layover. Now I um, can't remember the by Dubai. And they, they're they waiting for us to come off the plane. They're like, wait here. We're going to take you your next flight. We all go with this guy thinking he knows what he's talking about. And they have the gate closed. They're like, no, sorry, we, we can't let you board. So I had to stay in the airport. And then uh, that ended up being a 26-hour travel time. And I don't, I can't sleep on planes. I, I, I wear a CPAP and I'll like try to plug in and I'm like, yeah, forget it. I just, I won't sleep for shit. I was there three hours in Dubai and had to go straight to the seminar. Like I, poor yeah. performance. <laughs> you know? At least had three hours. I had to wait all day. It was just like, uh, I think at four o'clock I was like, maybe, maybe I should go to the gym and train, you know, just to, just to wake up. Uh, yeah, good. I, I did this before back in the 90s. I would take uh, in LAX, I would take a sleeping pill. And uh, the next day, I know I'm, I'm uh, waking up in uh, Frankfurt, you know, uh, you know fasten your seatbelt, we, we are landing. That was like beautiful. And yeah, John, you don't know, like uh, on the way back here from Frankfurt, you know, uh, I took off to, to Los Angeles and uh, 30 minutes into the flight, I'm dozing off and said, prepare for landing. It's like, oh my God, shit. This is, you know, I didn't take a sleeping pill. So, you know, it, it is, you know, impossible that I fall asleep for that long. But it was emergency landing, you know. Mm-hmm. So you had to turn around and it was, uh, yeah, one of those things. The guys forgot. I mean, it's, 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 it's
Yeah. But listen, John, John Jewett, a former 212 guy. <clears throat> yes, sir. I remember, I remember yeah. you competing the 212, and I also remember you being the probably the most shredded guy on the stage. I okay. met you at my pro debut. That's right. It's uh, the Phoenix Europa. I remember you, you came up to me after and gave me some inspiring uh, words there. Or, or, shredded. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. So what makes you say, okay, I'm going to go into the Open? I mean, I, I turned pro in 2016, and that was the plan. And to go open, I was coaching with Matt Jansen at the time. He was like, just do one, two, 12 show, see how you do, and then we could go up from there. So that that's what I did. And I and 2016 to 17, I just saw offseason. I was up to like 260. I was like, mm -hmm. all right, we're going to do the New York Pro for an open debut. I went to the Dominican Republic, though, with, with my fiance for vacation. Got some crazy parasite. <laughs> it lasted for like five weeks when I came back. Lost 20 pounds, so I was down to 240. <laughs> and still stubborn to do the show. So I'm like, let's do New York, and I'll just do 212. And since then, I've uh, just kind of stayed in that 212 circuit. I had some like sub, you know, substellar off seasons. I had some okay ones. Um, it, eventually 2019, it, it kind of came together. I did well. Won Tampa Pro, got fourth at the Olympia in the 212. Um, then COVID happened and the off season was kind of, kind of crap. And then I was stubborn after the 2020 Olympia because I, I came in not in shape. So I went straight into dieting the rest of the year. 2021, I did like five shows. Uh, body weight kept coming down, but I was just chasing every last glute line and kind of fading up top. So this past uh, 2022, I was like, you know, I need time off just to recoup. And now coming into this year, it was like, man, it's going to be tough to make weight. Like after having finally an actual off season and uh, did the Atlanta Pro. And this year I'd already decided, like, I'm going to do an open show. Like, I just want to put my foot out there and, and see how how I fare, especially with we see so many 212 guys doing it now. It's kind of a little bit more inspiring. It's feel like even the judging uh, gives everyone a fair shot when it's like before you just need the big structure to really make it happen. Hmm. So, so after the Atlanta Pro, I won that show in 212, and I just prepped like I was going to do an open show, and that was it. It was just Legion. And body weight kept moving up, and I kept looking better. And then I'll get to this point where it's like, man, it, it would be kind of ridiculous to suck back down. And so that's uh, that's the short and long story, I guess, of why it took me so long to do open, but finally did it. <laughs> Does the Legion have a 212 too, or just the open? They only have open, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. mainly just all a master show for a while. They, they keep bringing mm -hmm. in some of the open divisions. So right now it's just open bodybuilding. So are you staying in the open now? I will. Yeah. You will. Yeah, listen, I was trying to convince him uh, to do the 212 Olympia because it's around the corner. And, uh, you know, when I was talking to John and I appreciate what he does, even though I, I, I was going to ask you that one time that you were not in shape, how that happened, because he got uh, his conditioning down to the science. I mean, every time you see him, it's just like unbelievable. And and then following him going into the show, three weeks out, he's stage ready. And then two weeks out, he's bigger and drier and bigger. And, you know, like it's just improving in every, every possible way. So I want to know how come that that one year you were not in shape because uh, in contest prep modes, what could possibly go wrong? But, but listen, Dennis and, and Chris. Okay. So John... You're asking him a question or us now? No, you, you, because I already asked him and he already told me the answer. Well, so I took his answer. Okay. But, uh, you two. Okay, you two, because you, you are seasoned pros and uh, you're thinking with a probably similar uh, mind like I do. He's still qualified for 212. He can possibly, one last time, squeak into the 212 and compete and never compete again and have oh. a legitimate chance because he's oh. qualified. Oh, you qualified for the 212. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he already said no. He already said no, so I don't want to push it too much. Ask, did you ask him why? Yeah, okay. But but the, he's going to tell you that and tell to the audience. But what do you think? And it's Chris. You're like a 10, 12 pounds away. There's a, there are the ways you can squeak in, you know, that one time. <laughs> and uh, So say goodbye to the 212 on a high note. 
I, I think that John has a chance of winning. When when we were talking about two twelve guys, we completely you know, you tell this to every you tell this to every single guy. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't. <laughs> I swear to God, I don't. Yes, you did. That's I mean, it, that's it, you it, five it. different people. You you have a chance of winning. That's his macking lines. That's how he mack them up. Yes, yes, he has a chance of winning. Daddy mack line. <laughs> I'm gonna be, before I answer the question, what I would do if I was him, I'm gonna ask him first. Why are you not doing the 212 even though you're qualified? My ultimate goal at this point is to always walk on stage a better version of myself. And seeing what I did in the open was mm -hmm. so far beyond my look in 212 that I had promised myself to never get on stage again with a lesser, whether it's condition or increasing in, in size that highlights my you know, frames and whatnot. So it's, it's about being better. And I don't need you, an Olympia stage to, to present that on. If I never did Olympia again, I realized that might happen. Hmm. That uh, I, I, I'm at peace with. The region. How much did you weigh in the open? Yeah, I was uh, on on stage 224. Did, um, you check, you don't, did you check your weight? Is there a scale on stage? <laughs> <laughs> Not on stage. I, I, bring, I bring one back. I bring the one back there with me. Yeah. yeah. So, you, know, uh, um, you know how people are. People say, yeah, I was 260 on stage. How sure. the fuck? Where did you, you, How do you know? Your, you checked their weight the last time, like two weeks out from the How show. Before you walking out the door. No, no, yeah. So I, I, I am checking weights by meals, and I was about right around 224 within my last meal. Then when I get back to the hotel, I see how much I dropped to replace fluids, and, and I was like 223.2 after after prejudge. Um, so, yeah, I float, float around that mark. Did you, did you decide before the Legion that you weren't going to do the 212 this year? I had a, a different path. So I'm a, I'm a thinker, man. So it's like, if this happens, I do this. If this happens, I do this, right? So if I was just way out of the mix and the feedback from the judges, like, listen, John, like the size to put on, you would, it, it's just not even reasonable. We like you better 212. That's an easy call. 212 Olympia, I go, I suck down. That's where I do for the rest of competing. Um, if I was in the mix, like real close to winning, I had Romania in my mind. Uh, qualify earlier um, or how you win the show and I would do the open Olympia. So these were kind of like the different paths I had already chosen. And so there was a, there was an option to maybe do 212, but I would have to just not even be close um, competitive wise in the open because I am 37. So I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm not 27 year old John where I could then, you know, add all the stage weight on that needs to happen and, you know, the health and all that that goes along with it. So uh, yeah, uh, those were, these were all choices I had. I just needed to see how Legion panned out first and speak with the judge and see what, what the so, feedback so you're was. Saying, what, so what are you saying is that the second place at the Legion made you decide not to do the uh, the 212 Olympia? Yeah, yeah, it was a so large you, influence. So you would rather go to Orlando, watch these guys battle, and then you're going to sit there and you say, oh, he's not in shape, he's not in shape, he's not in shape. I could have beat him. <laughs> I'm at peace with that. And I had to, I had to know that ahead of time that I could let that happen and sit out and not have that um, that fear of missing out and, and that uh, you know and be okay with it and I am I'm totally fine with it okay well that that, that would be my thing I mean I now knowing what, what the reason is I'm gonna have to agree with Milos I would probably also push you for you know try to push you to do to do the 212 because if I can't win it this year uh, there's not enough motivation for me to do it like I don't have a passion to do 212 if I if I'm not getting better, because then you're going to see John, that's the lesser version of what the judges just saw. Mm. I, I now, get that. I get that. But you could have yeah. said, you know, I'm out. You know, everybody know now what you can be at 224. Sure. It's not like you're going to hurt your name by being yeah. less less full or less big at the, on the 212. Everybody knows what you have to go through. So it's not like people are going to be like, oh, look, he looked, he looked great at the Legion, but right now... Enough. You know, they they wouldn't do that. They know that this is your last one. I would make that official. I said, this is my last 212. Yeah. I know. I, I totally, totally get that. It is but like four, four weeks have... of sucking down, right? Yeah. Or four weeks I could put into the ultimate the ultimate goal. And these weeks add up, you know. Um, yeah. And I've been on prep for a long time. But I get it's the Olympia. But yeah. even for 212, man, we don't get the coverage like you do in the Open. Uh, so if you're not even in the top three <laughs> – it was barely even talked about, you know. So it's it I'm has to be doing about, it. I'm going to talk about the two twelve guys. It has to be about me, I'm not what anyone about, else thinks, right? I'm going to make it about you and your, your <laughs> fiance. 
you and your. <laughs> I think, uh, Chris, Chris, what do you think? I mean, Dennis agree with me. How about you? For once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, we talked so much. We talked when you had Kamal on. We talked. Kamal, I told Kamal. Go do the open because you want to. You want to retire, saying you did it all. Melos wanted him to do the two twelve because he think he can win. And now he decided not doing it at all. He's not competing. Yeah, something yeah. about his brother, though, right? Yeah, yeah. His, his brother, brother was diagnosed. His brother was diagnosed. Cancer. So yeah. Yes, I, I mean honestly, Kamal. I don't. I didn't see him competitive at the uh, open. He didn't have what John has. John created the illusion. He placed second at open shows. Huh? Yeah, yeah I, I know that, but listen, uh, he he, he uh, played second to uh, uh, Akeem Williams in in Tampa, but then placed fourth or fifth in in Texas. No, he just put it this way: we love Sean Clarita, we love Sean Clarita, and pound for pound, I mean, this is it, shit. And going into the Arnold Classic, somebody says, "Oh yeah, he he can smoke Samson and all these guys." I said, "Guys, that's Ooh. a." The, the Sean Clarita could beat Smoke. Thompson and those other guys. Then there was like narrative, like, oh yeah, that it's possible. He mm -hmm. so uh, well, that's, if uh, it's possible if they if they get on the wrong bus to make it to the finals, they're not showing up. But listen, but, but what John just brought in in uh, Tampa. I mean, look at him next to uh, you know, no, Reno, 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 Reno. What did I say? Yeah, Reno. He was he was uh, holding a size. Condition, shape, fullness, everything. So, did you, watch, did you watch the live stream? Yeah, I did. Of course. Yeah. Was it close? Yeah, it was close. It, it, it could go either way. It right. could it could it could go either way. I mean, uh, Charles Griffin, you know, had that uh, narrowly grainy, you know, the the there was like no skin, no no body fat, no nothing. Right? Uh, he had a disfigured chest, which I didn't notice going. Yeah, Pack, yeah, the, the, he had a, that pack there, and then it was visible in a front legs, front uh, a last spread. It was, uh, you know, most muscular shed. So that's that question: Do you penalize uh, guys with the tear? Should, should he get marked down for having? He yeah. used to one and a half. I don't know. I mean, uh, look, Dorian Yates had a biceps there. Uh, Chris Dickerson had a two, you know, muscle tear, and he still won the Olympia. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't penalize them. How, no, I, I think, wouldn't penalize I think if, I, if I do a front double biceps and I have only one biceps, that doesn't that mean I'm I'm not complete in this pose? Doesn't yeah. matter how good my lats and my legs are. Besides, the, the, the audience is 94. 94. I understand, and I, I know I know what you mean, but I'm just asking you. Don't you think it should be judged? Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, I, I, th it, I think it factors in, but you have like a moment with the person, right? Looking at their whole physique, and I think if that catches some a judge's eye quick enough. It would probably be a big focus. I don't know if uh, Charles's was enough. Like he did a really good job hiding it, right? So like his side chest, he tried to hide it a lot. So maybe it just didn't catch the eye enough to where it's like the full package is still then, really good. Great, great. That that means he's doing a good job of hiding it, which is yeah. perfect. I would do the same, and yeah. I gotta give him credit too. I mean, he went from being mediocre. I mean, just being there on stage. His body in the last two, three years transformed tremendously, especially his condition. Condition. He was 14th last year at the Olympia, 13th or 14th. Yeah. It's going to be hard at the Olympia for him still. It will be. Yeah. You know, I got to keep it. When you put it like this, 14th at the Olympia, like, uh, that's horrible. Jake Adler was in, in great condition and shape in 99 Olympia and placed 15, right? So, you know, you put that in perspective. Somebody has to be first and somebody has to be last, you know, among the good ones. But but in this show, I, I'm serious. The, the only reason why I'm saying this, uh, and I'm going to finish with this, uh, uh, John, I love you and I respect you and appreciate you. And for me, it was just down the line, uh, now that we are old, it's like, oh, I hate realizing I wasted this opportunity and that opportunity. So for me, when I was analyzing you, the big chapter of your life is 212, and you uh, place it as high as fourth, mm -hmm. and uh, you're super competitive. And now, especially with what you're bringing, which you just brought to the Legion, holy hell, right? No, but he yeah. said, but but like you said, he can't bring what he brought to the Legion to the 212. I think he could, you know, like with the, hey, John is a master, Jesus Christ. He told you, he brings, listen, listen, listen. Do not give up. 
He yeah, was that, that, to, to make the point and then I walk away. We already yeah. he already said his his uh, mind is not there and he is in the off season. But there is still oh, that you, he has you, a you scale. Have you stopped everything? You start eating? Everything's over with. I, I mean, I, I'm very controlled, <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty much like I'm I'm up to like two thirty now, and uh, yeah, yeah. The the off season yeah, has begun. So. Yeah, that'd be hard to get in two twelve. It would it would be a lot in the next few days to, Milo, to make Milo, it. Happen. Can you make it in two and a half weeks? Can make it, man. But listen, <laughs> on is a uh, course. Then I win it. <laughs> listen, hey, hey, from from two thirty, if he would get on if he gets on heavy diuretics, would he make weight? <laughs> Hold on a second. No. U- UFC guys make weight with no diuretics know, in like five days, a squeak in and lose yeah, 30 that's, pounds. That's wrestling. I know, but they, they don't they have care to about they, the muscle size. They don't have I, to be full and round. They don't have to they don't have to pose. Yes. Yeah, once you step on the scale, you make it loose. Yeah, I'll break loose. Milos, I, I wrestle and I'm telling you from a wrestler's mindset. You're spitting. You're going to lose water. You want to sauna. I used to lose five pounds in one hour. That was my. That was my. That was my max. Like I could lose five pounds. I can do that too. I get on the stairmaster in one hour. hour. One hour. So I'm just saying, but you don't worry about your body the way your body looks. So that's that's the whole thing. I know how it is. It's just like technically you can do it. <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to tell you this at uh, Universe back in uh, Arizona. Uh, <laughs> I needed when I was competing eighty uh, seven, eight, and nine. I was two pounds overweight, and they gave me half an hour. I said, shit, okay. And, you know, like, I'm I'm done. There is nothing to lose. I said, okay, Tucson, Arizona, you know, I, I put the fucking jacket, and I, I went for a run, and I, I made it weight. Okay, it's in, in 30 minutes. So you can do it. I, I don't want to push it because, really, I have a utmost respect and admiration for John. I listen to his uh, theories and what he does. He's a scientist. He brings the scale. You you heard him? He measured his uh, body weight before and after the meal, you know, uh, morning, evening. Uh, he is down to the science. So if anybody can make the weight, he could. But uh, the the final thought is, could he possibly still beat uh, uh, Sean Clarita and Keon and uh, Baggio and Calderon? He has a very good chance. I think when I look back at like 2019 and I got fourth, there there was a change of guard around that time. Yeah. Like I, I was coming up, but the lot of the lot of the older guys were phasing out, and we now see another stream of 212 that are they're all short of me. I'm five foot seven, so yeah. it, it's still a, a big hurdle of muscularity to overcome in 212. That I, I structure wise, I just it's hard for me to fill out that much. To overcome it now, could I make weight? I know, I know I could because I've done it this year, but it has to be pretty incrementally done to where like peak week, you're waking up eventually right at 212, and also like I'm having to pull out like all PEDs right the day before. There's no fiber. I if I wake up on show day at 212 and I don't need to eat or drink until weigh-ins, I can come back enough from that, but to have to like wake up any any higher in body weight. It just doesn't give me that timeline to fill out because I was talking the other podcast with Milos in Atlanta. I picked that show because I found out they have a 36 hour way into stage time. So I had a, a whole a whole day and a half to just eat and hydrate and then get hard again. Right. For the show. While at the Olympia, you have maybe 24 hours because you weigh in kind of mid morning and then you're on stage again mid morning. So there's more body weight to come down to. Now and I have less time to fill out, so I likely would not be as good as I was in Atlanta in theory, which again is something I don't want to do. <laughs> I, I I wish they had a longer period of being able to you know get your your you know fill out your physique and uh, I wish they had that for classic and a two twelve. I mean, it's up to you how you look after that. If you eat too much or whatever, or if you, whatever you don't look classic enough or, or <clears throat> streamlined enough in the two twelve. But I feel like you guys need more time than that, man. It's not a, it's not a, a a great look for me to not see the muscles at a at a. Uh, Why wouldn't you give them two days like they do um, with the with the big boys? I don't know. I mean, the big boys not even weighing in, right? So. 
Yeah, I know, but they have their meeting. Yeah, but, but I would do a, I would do a special thing for the the two twelve and the classic guys. Even is if it's three days. On, on Thursday, is it an Olympia meeting on Thursday for the two twelve? It is, but we compete on Friday. Yeah, they compete early. I don't know why they don't just they, they, they let them come in too. If, you, if they want to do an early check in, I would let them do an early check in or something. Yeah, check in on Wednesday. They give you two days before you get on stage. Because it's not enough, man. Do, now, do you, do y'all think that would lead to more risk? of like extreme weight cuts to make weight since you're like, Hey, now I can fill out a bunch more when this is probably one of the most dangerous parts of, of uh, weight cap competing, right? Is extreme weight cuts and rehydration and electrolyte, all that stuff. So do you, do you think that might lead to more risk in those classes? It leads to more risk to weigh in the way the guys in a day earlier. Yeah. Like they like, Hey, I got two days now to fill out. I'm going to pull like 15 pounds off and make weight now instead of my normal. They're still going to be able to do it anyway. They're going to do that. I, anyway. I know because you have to, you're going to have to lose the weight regardless. They're going to do it anyway. If you don't, if you're to to do it for Thursday or for Wednesday. I think that, I think that the risk is the same. It's just the only thing that I think the only benefit is that you get instead of 24 hours, you get 48 hours to Three fill hours. out. Right. Like an example you, you gave it, John. Enough, you would have enough time. Yeah. To literally carve up so much that you start spilling and you still have enough time to get rid of the, you know, whatever you spill. You, you had 36 okay. hours in uh, that Atlanta show and, and that, that was perfect for you. So you can mm -hmm. steadily, incrementally, like you said, uh, put the weight. When you have a few hours and then you try to load up, uh, that's the big discrepancy. I think that's more risky. But anyway, it, let's it's move strange. On. I remember that they used to have the 212 on Wednesday too, right after the big boys. There you go. I don't know. Yeah, I remember that. They used to be we 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 done with our with our um meeting and then they would you know weigh in the two twelves. I remember one year um I think it was Flex Lewis. Somebody had to run was it Flex Lewis? I think it was Flex Lewis he had to run and do a a, a colonics because he, he he had to make <laughs> so awesome. they had to they had to call someone in the middle of the night to open up and do a colonics with him. And uh, it's the same with um, Eduardo Carrera. I mean, he was uh, just like half a pound over, and they made him lose the weight. So that that used to be Wednesday. So they moved it to Thursday. I mean, That's even for myself, when I make weight, like the next, I'm having to eat and drink overnight. Like wake wake up every three hours and eat drink, and so you can just get enough in because that timeline is just so so mm -hmm. tight to make it happen. I. When I did the New York Pro, you actually weigh in the morning of the show. That yeah. was that was a mess to pick that show weigh in only, at like eight a.m. on stage only, at eleven. <laughs> yeah, it's only a mess for people like you that barely made weight. Oh yeah, yeah. For for the ones under, it doesn't matter. Well, all these guys are way under. Like you'd be surprised, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so I guess we'll have to see the two twelve Olympia without you, John. So. You know, that's it. You, 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 you didn't hear the last for Milos because I guarantee you, if anybody's off, <laughs> this top is three, the second time I'm trying to convince him. Yeah. It, if anybody's <laughs> off in the top three, you will hear from him. <laughs> I, I, I don't bullshit. I really mean it. He's he was so competitive in the in the uh, Legion on the open. So how can you not? OK, now, but translate this. OK, dehyde a little bit more, make the weight and then try to go back to 224, you know. And then 224, complete, round, wide, shapely, shredded. I mean, you will, you will give them hell. Because, we you know, Keon, we all love Keon. We just hope that Keon is going to come in shape. And do you expect Keon to be in John kind of condition? You know, I, I would be leaning oh. towards, yeah, John is going to. See, I've, 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 see, I've competed against Keon before. Mm -hmm. And this was, what, two years ago? Keon's better, like I'm potentially better too. I was peeled, peeled out, but Keon beat me because yeah, his, his aesthetics and shape is that that standout. Yeah. Um, Angel Calderon, he brings condition, but he also extreme muscularity, right? And same, same with same with Sean. So those are those are some pretty big hurdles to overcome. Um, and if I'm not within that, if I'm not better than that fourth that I had in 19, it's, it's hard to want to have the motivation to, to take a swing at it with hmm. knowing like when I did Atlanta, right? I, I was, again, I'm weighing myself before stage, uh, right around 214. So my timeline to make weight, even after eating all of that, I, I pushing weight up higher, it, it got to where I started 
getting watery and it, it wasn't, I couldn't move up that in that timeline. So I ended up, when I woke on show on weigh in day, I was like 209 and I could get up to that 214 mark and that was my best look. I was like 218 at night. Um, but man, I, I couldn't go on stage like that. Like it was too, there was no waste control because the, the, it was so full and lines were fading. So I couldn't, I couldn't, there's no way I could push up, up to like 224 in that timeline is, is what I know. So, and having stood next to a lot of these guys already, it, it's tough that I think, I, I don't think I would, could maybe be in that top five mix in the 212. So, oh. so, okay. so, so what show are you aiming for next year? Well, I'd like a, some off season time. So it ends up landing sometime in the fall. I'd love to see the schedule. How much do you think you have to wait in the open? What will will be your your personal goal? Yeah, well, sure. Uh, Wait's tough, right? Because I I think it – I don't think people have a lot of realism around how how far stage weight really goes. It's most like a – just like the illusion that you create, right? Sure. And and Tarek, the head judge at Legion – He's like, hey, right now, like, you don't need a ton of size. Like, you could win an open show. He's like, what we hate seeing is waste get bigger. Like, even control on stage, he was making a point. Of, like, he was calling names out of guys that are losing in transitions. He's like, add a little bit more on, but don't lose the waist size. So, honestly, with that being said, I mean, maybe that's another five pounds of stage weight, um, four, four or five pounds. I think with the timeline – for that year, that I think that's reasonable without seeing like some big waist expand out or you know lose lose my lines. So what do you look so, like at two thirty? pretty conditioned right now uh what comes up first though is my waist <laughs> you know um so I, I still need some time to put the actual tissue on right do you, do you do any training for your waist or you just let it go as it is oh no no i'm i'm huge on waist training though i have it man i have my notes in my phone of things that that must happen every day and uh i do abdominal vacuums 10 sets straight into abdominal contractions. So like you'd hit like an overhead ab and thigh, suck it in the obliques into the vacuum. So that's in place every single day in the off season, non-negotiable must, must occur. Cause I was the guy on stage actually at the show that Dennis was at the Europa Phoenix Europa. The judge came up to me off stage. Cause I, I let my waist hang out walking off stage. He's like, Hey, Ooh. you cannot do that. And and it was embarrassing. They actually have a photo of it out there. So uh, yeah. So yeah, Chris. Like I I drill on waist waist training control, and I'm huge on digestion that. and picking the right food. So I'm not walking around all like happy and full looking in the off season. <laughs> that that meant a lot to me uh, during the competition years because I felt like that was one thing I could could always hold on to. That okay, I get as big as I can, but I didn't want to sacrifice. Mm-hmm any any way size like no matter what like that was my that was my goal especially uh, when you're competing against like flex Chris, and it, you know, what's like tiny what you say what is, what slick shit you say <laughs> uh, no I, I haven't even said it yet i'm about to say it oh i saw your face it's fresh. Yeah, yeah i said chris you could have you could have done whatever you wanted to do your waist would have not <laughs> you know so it, it it just was, that, was, that, that was in my mind all the time you know but no, nah, I don't think. Listen, listen. If if your waist was, would grow, I'm sure you done a, you done enough stuff that you were not supposed to do, and your waist still didn't grow. <laughs> it was and grow. someone else who would eat, you know, he would eat clean and, and don't do this, and his shit will grow. It's just <laughs> right. I get it. You know, yeah, but, but John, how long uh, do you keep those uh, uh, vacuums? Like you did the ten sets. Uh, yeah. How long? How long do you keep it? So I, I like people to get instructions. Sure. I mean, for, I mean, for those, I'm trying, the, the idea is to pull it in as hard as possible. So it's a forced exhalation, let everything out. So you can't hold it for as long. 
but I I'll hold it as long as I can until I need to grab a breath. So, so usually that might be that might be ten seconds that I could hold that before I need to then bring my abs down to contraction. And the goal of coming back down into the ab contraction is being also able to control that diaphragm breathing. So like when I come back down to the ab contraction, it's like short breaths through my nose and out through my mouth quickly. So I don't go, <gasps> you know, and you see the gut hang out. Um, Cause what do you do after a vacuum? Well, how do you control it? So I'm trying to train that aspect the entire time. So I, I hold it as long as I can before I need to gain that breath back, but it goes right back into an ab con contraction and trying to practice that breath control. And I think a lot of guys on stage aren't thinking about a breathing strategy through all these poses. But they're not and putting that's... together enough posing to even get to that point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> then they just get, get worked on stage, right? right? But another thing that you mentioned that I want people to pay attention, and I've seen Dennis, you, you did this masterfully. Like, uh, Dennis could uh, reduce his waist size with the ex complete uh, exhaling and bringing the obliques and intercostals all the way in. It was like ridiculous. Like, shh. You said that uh, you know, first you bring them in and then vacuum, right? And keeping it in. And uh, Chris, uh, when you were uh, telling Max Charles, I remember uh, hearing you giving him some instructions. So first you said uh, in, then uh, uh the, the the waist in and then exhale yeah. and, and pop the abs because yeah. you just pop the abs you know waist can go wider right yeah. so you have to pay attention in this first and then in yeah right. so I, I whoever uh didn't follow john jewett uh, go on his uh, instagram there are numerous instructions pretty much every day training wise posing wise nutritionally I mean, I learn a lot. Uh, I do. I, I I like to peek every day, every day what uh, John is cooking. I'm a I'm a nerd, man. But I mean, I don't get me wrong. I'm a meathead. I'm gonna true follow heart. you right now, John. Follow me. Follow right me. Now. But but I also like to learn all the way. Like, why am I doing this? How does it work? And so it's gotten to where I'm kind of like a nerdy meathead. But uh, that's uh that's my audience. So I'm not too sciencey. I'm not quoting studies all the time. But I. Um, like like explanations behind the things we we do and see work in the trenches, right? That makes sense. So can yeah. I ask? I mean, because you said what I read from uh, a hearing, what you said, you don't have a confidence that you could be like top three uh, in two twelve, I guess. So who would be uh, your top three in uh, two twelve? Yeah. You say? <laughs> these two i guess now that i'm not 212 it's okay right they won't attack me no i do think it's going to be um somewhat repeat of last year with sean then angel and then i i would see keon as a third i, I don't know if keon you have to see the, the proof in the pudding right to to really see it happen so i haven't seen keon bring the condition quite yet that could overpower what i think sean and angel have and Angel has that like freak muscularity factor also, even despite Keon's like beautiful shape. I don't I don't know if it's enough to weigh out with the the muscularity side for Angel. So I, I think he would probably land in that in that third spot. What about Banjo? Kirith. Kirith is extremely comparable to Sean. Um and I, I know Kirith has gone against uh Keon before. Um I, I see Kirith being in the top five. I think he can crack into that. I don't see him getting into the top three and being now Keon uh, because I don't think he has quite the the overpowering like shape and structure that Sean does. Uh, but he's 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 had a lot of muscle on, so it would be a good comparison. They bring a lot of similar attributes, but I think he might still be within that fourth to fifth spot. I think we all said that, but the, the best – with Kamal El Gardney, he says, if Keon brings it, you know, show is over. That's Kamal saying it. If uh, Keon comes in condition, then uh, he wins. He, he, I think Keon could be the the next Flex Lewis of just reigning um, because you have someone with, with it all, right? The the shape, the muscularity, the aesthetics, they can pose beautifully. Come in peeled? Man, how, how do you hang with that, right? But he wants to go open also so you you, you could does uh, he yeah you can count on him coming into the open in a year or two or three 
Yeah. I mean, just just with his structure and everything, he, he can look as on on himself. He looks as big as an open guy, if not better. He's like a he's like a Derek Lunsford, right? Yeah, I think um, Keon's got what? He, he's not that heavy. No, he's on. He's way under the the limit. I think like one eighty something. I thought he was under two hundred. There's one eighty something like that. Oh, uh, that was he was a classic. Now he's like in the low, the low two hundred. Oh no, no, sorry, not just like Keon. Sorry, hey, wrong guy. Wrong guy. Yeah, I think he's like two hundred five, two hundred seven, something like that. He's yeah, got I think he said he was around two hundred the last time we spoke to him, right? Huh? I thought he said he was around two hundred or two. two yeah, 200. I know, yeah, I don't. It, I know he had plenty of room left. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pl- plenty of room to keep keep getting even bigger and just to dominate. I know, and, and, and yeah, and for him, I, th- I don't think he needs to get bigger. I think he needs to get that body in shape, in real shape one time so the body knows where he has to go. And I think sometimes once you get it done one time, I think your body, it's easier for your body to remember, oh, okay, I know, because right now, even though sometimes he thinks he's in, in crazy shape, but he's not. But for him, you know, he, it looks like it's it's different, but when you stand next to someone like you, then then you can really see how good, you, what kind of shape you're in. You know, a lot of people think they, oh yeah, I'm shredded, and then they get next to someone who's who's shredded, and they be like, wait a minute, why my shit don't look like his? And you it's, know, what I'm man, <laughs> it's it's tough, man, because with if you're online coaching people and they send you what kind of lighting they send you in, you're like, oh man, this guy's really good. Then you see him in person, you're like, oh man, that lighting you sent me was just really good. Yeah. So, like even for myself, like I'll, I have some standardized like in my closet. There's no windows. I do photos there, but once I'm lean enough, I don't see the fine details anymore. I have to actually go outside and get in some daylight, and then yeah. start comparing those pics to see stuff really change. So I know a lot of these guys. I'll see him on Instagram. I mean, this guy looks super conditioned. Even this last show I did. Then when I'm backstage with them, seeing in person, I'm like they weren't like the Instagram's not translating over to what the actual condition was. So yeah. I think, uh, yeah, you need some real honest comparisons for your for your own self. Like have what you post, that's fine, but also send send coach like the the roughest pictures you can find that really expose yourself. How is uh, how is Regan doing? <laughs> Why do you mention him now? <laughs> He's messy. Regan looks crazy in pictures. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I, I can possibly imagine how that is. You know, when you have all these filters, and uh, you look at without, even without filters, it looks crazy. And 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 I know because I, I I did the same when I trained and I had a good workout, and then I take some pictures afterwards. You look fucking freaky. But listen, I, I know this uh, conversation when when they have. I, I hear them speak. So you take a picture, yeah, with no filter and all this stuff, and then you apply the filter, and then you you see this shit. I said, oh, 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 this looks so good. You know? So how do you know. how do you now go back, right? But he must know that we know that this is filtered. I know, but that's better. You know, it's still it's still out there. No, he is not doing. As you see, now, a Regan is not even. So my picture, I can take a back double biceps right now. It look like super garbage. But yeah. I guarantee you, if I take the right filter, it looks decent. Yeah, yeah well, it's you know, you don't see guys post much. A, a lot of these guys leading up to shows, like in Legion, most of these guys I stay like covered the, up and don't like post anything. People, I like the fact that people post. I like what Regan is doing. He's doing a good job. But I, I agree. I, I don't think it, it hurts you at all. Yeah. Well, it can sometimes. It could, but the judges <laughs> aren't going to say, I saw your Instagram photos. We're, we're going to dock uh, you for it. I don't know. I don't know if the judge because the judges are look. They say they're not looking, but they're looking too. They're looking. They're looking too. So now you see someone full, fully loaded on, on on Instagram. Even if it's not a filter picture, I know some pictures you can take two hundred shots and three of them are fucking awesome, and the rest looks shit. But I think that maybe towards the end, the last few weeks, he should back off a little bit. Yeah. What would you think? Post your best stuff or some. Nah, a few post weeks the, back. Post the worst. Hey, so I think Nathan DeAsha was doing that. He's like, "Yeah, I post my photos from like two weeks back." That's um, what they all say. That's what they all say. I right? know. Yeah. This is this is this is a. Uh, five minutes old. Let's say yeah, this ago. Is ago. I, 
See my that's my the, perspective. That's the like, mental hey. thing. Like think how I look now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you can you get hyped. Imagine. You get hyped up, right? By posting your best, or you're like kind of underrated. Then you really surprise people at the show. But where do you where where do you make your money now, bodybuilding? But either way, the judges social media uh, on the stage. I thought and listen, uh, John. Maybe you didn't follow back in the day. I had a. Colosseum gym, all the guys were coming into the gym for photo shoots, and I would have camera and just snap. And I, I was putting on, on my uh, uh, bulletin board, you know, back in the day, right? It was getbig.com, bodybuilding.com, and all this stuff. And I'm a fan. I want to, of course, I want to see what Chris Cormier looks like, or Dennis James two weeks out, or John Drew. Of course, I want to see it. And now I have a picture. And this is just for me? No, let me uh, tell, <laughs> let me give all the. Yeah. Yeah. I swear to God, I get. I, get I, I agree with Milos. I say post it all because it all, it's only going to help you as a bodybuilder. Now, now think about this: you're a couple of weeks out. You know, you're drained. You know, two hours of cardio, you just train and you just get it over with. Now here comes Milos with the camera around his neck. <laughs> oh, you know, let, me, let me just take one shot. Let me take one shot. That was the best stuff. They want me to pose for like 30 minutes so you can get all the pictures in the world. <laughs> that, that's yeah. all the, that's then, all the best then, stuff. And then you take, you can tell me, I said, please don't post it. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> the picture well, going but... somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere yeah. has got to see it because me is like, you got to see this. You got to see this. Yeah, yeah I, I have a, Trust me, I have a video from Samson that I, I, I tried like 17 times to convince him, just like I'm trying to convince the, uh, John to, to compete. Just leak it, man. Fuck it, just leak it. <laughs> you know? I said, no, 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 don't do it. It's okay. Well, you know what we do? Here's what we do. We send it to me, and I'm tell I promise you I'm not going to post it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the, the – just imagine this. King Kamali is a big fan of Sa Samson, and he's talking – and then uh, at one moment, uh, uh, you know, Samson says, hey, just send it to him. Okay, but he can't show it to anyone. I said, are you fucking crazy? To send to King and King not showing anybody? That's uh, impossible. No, I'm not doing this. And I guess you're right. So Samson was going to actually uh, let him see it and, and then change his mind. Trust me, it, it, it's like one of those. Okay, after the Olympia, I'm going to have to repost these videos. You know how I do in the retrospective? I put something, I, it, it looks amazing. But it, it world should see it. And it better not be no excuse. You know what I mean? It better not be no excuse video. It's like, oh, I don't know what happened, but this is what he looked like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you hear right now what is now two and a half weeks, you know, uh, from yesterday and then from this weekend. I have it, you know, if you're here, I would show you, but. Hey, don't, don't show us. Just tell me. Tell me. Yeah, what it, it looks. He looks way improved. Uh, I mean, it's way ahead of anything he was at any point so far. Nine shows that we did. He was how never this league. I'm hmm? confident are you that he will be in the best shape ever. I'm confident. One million percent. One million percent. You know, that's it. It's, uh, he, and he is super confident you know, that he can win. He knows what he's bringing, right? So is Hardy going to uh, outcondition him? Yeah. Uh, so, but but here is something for the debate for you guys. Hmm. Wasn't Hadi that won the Olympia the worst condition Hadi you've ever seen? Yeah, but but his yeah. worst condition is still better than everybody else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you tried it against him. No, no, no. So uh, now, now pay attention to this one. Hadi super conditioned, super conditioned, lost to Raleigh Winkler, lost to Cedric McMillan. Lost to Brandon Curry hey. every time, right? So he, because at that time, at they that were time, talking about his shoulder one year. They were talking uh, about, you know. Chris, you also know at that time he hasn't paid his dues yet. So he paid his dues. Yeah, they, now. yeah he paid the dues. <laughs> he was <laughs> the people's champ. Was he people's champ twice? Yeah, he's current on his dues now. No, oh, he's current. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's paid. He's paid so, that. So, but still, listen, you don't have to be the most shredded guy to win a show. Yeah, but the idea is also this. Okay, I'm just going to be devil's advocate here. He was middleweight before. He mm -hmm. won light heavyweight uh, in uh, Dubai when next day he uh, turned pro. He was light heavyweight. That's 198, right? Yeah. Uh, light heavyweight is 198. So this is how he stepped on the stage with Raleigh Winkler. I mean, 
there was a 16 week uh, difference in conditioning, right? But uh, Rolly Winkler, you know, beat him. And then when he lost to Cedric Mignon, you were preparing a big Rami, and uh, that uh, 2021 when he was with uh, uh, Brandon and um, Hardy, and I was telling you, I mean, Hardy was killing them in in uh, conditioning. It was not even close. But uh, he plays only third, and that's as good Hardy as could be. Now they're just okay. It's final just, do we had to pay. That was, that was a really good Brandon though that year. Like that was incredible Brandon, and that's what Brandon is probably coming this year. And that kind of Brandon was beating Hardy before <coughs> three times. You know, yeah. It's like who who's jumped up to gain the most traction to to improve the most, right? Um, Hottie could come back a little bit conditioned, but I don't think he has enough room to improve like we've seen with Samson yeah. and Derek. Can Hardy shock us again? Or is it just something we're going to expect from him anyways? That kind of stinks, right? Because Hottie already has like an incredible physique that's already shocking, but you see it enough, it kind of loses its shock factor. It's yeah, like all uh, the shock factors are out because we know the condition is going to be the condition. So yeah. now he has a lot of maturity over the over the field. Right. Looks like he put on some size. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. The dude is strong too. So strong. Super hard work. Listen, but he's putting a size right way, like what uh, John was saying. Yeah. You know, he's not yes. expanding his mid, mid session, and kind of he is expanding upstairs, and then legs are getting. There, there was a time if you look at 2020, 2021, especially like uh, right leg was smaller. It's, there was uh, probably a little bit of injury. And it was not like really sweeping. I think last year he brought much fuller legs, mm -hmm. and now uh, they're, they're, they're fully loaded. Hardy was uh, middleweight, then light heavyweight, then he went to 212. 2018, he could go either way, which means he was around 212, 215 on the stage. Placing when, third. He won, when he won um, Vancouver, mm -hmm. you know, he beat Nathan the Asher. Yeah, yeah. And the other it was 212. Okay. So what do you think 2018 uh on the stage how it was? Hey, 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 I can I'm tell you this. Funny. I can tell you this when uh I MC the show in San Marino, San Marino Pro the year mm -hmm. came out to I think it was his pro debut. No, the pro debut was in uh, 2016 in uh Sheru Classic in Dubai. I watched it. Rally Winkler was uh, first, and then... somewhere around there, somewhere, uh oh, somewhere around there, it was had to be the next year. Then he did uh, compete in in, in San Marino. Mm -hmm. Cedric McMillan won. Brandon Curry got no, he beat Brandon Curry. Yeah, who got second? I can't remember. The the the, the second was Hardy, third was Brandon. So so it was second was Hardy, yeah. and. Hardy won that contest in my eyes. Not even it wasn't even close because you know you know Cedric wasn't in shape. Yeah, I know. But on so how did it happen? Well, <laughs> on like, the most shredded guy doesn't necessarily win shows. I like the I like the, I almost, like the eye test. I like the eye. We test. almost had to fight these guys. We almost had to literally fight these guys. I mean, I I was I was I had to get off stage. Steve took his, his jacket off. He's ready to go. Because yeah. Yeah, this Iranians were the fucking they're trying to bum rush the shit the stage. Oh yeah. It was, it yeah, was, it was like this close. It was like this close, man. Bro. <laughs> was it the Japan Japan Pro where he competed with uh Flex Lewis? Uh, Korea. 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 Yeah. Korea. Korea. Same yeah, thing there. Was, how does this how does that was this a wild happen? one no? How does this I, I like Flex? Don't get me wrong. How did, Flex Twice he lost to Hardy in Korea and he lost to Beto in Italy. Italy, I thought it was close with him and uh, Boston Mass one year or two. Well, we'll be, talking, we'll be speaking of, of Hardy. So let's let's say you said San Marino, he should have beat Cedric. On I would have gave it, I would have okay. given it to Cedric. But, but, but I, I gotta okay. say, that I was on stage and seeing, so I only saw what I saw. From this is when you apply certain filters. Filter of conditioning, blowout. Filter of size, okay? Size, open or 212. That right. has to be considered, size. Balance, everything there. Up and down, front and back. To be honest, 
I think that I liked him best when he won uh, Vancouver. A For me, that was the that. most impressive he's ever been. Were you were I, you there, Dennis? No, but I saw the videos in the picture. The video was incredible. But if you, right? and, I, and I think if he would have bring if he would have brought that to the Olympia, the same, I think he would have been he would be Mr. Olympia too now. I hear a lot of being around that Vancouver. That was his best, Listen, his best he's look. Not that, he's not that much heavier now than he was then. Because I think be, for what they're saying, he was like in the low two twenties. I was like, so I was like, so let him be two twenty. Yeah. And when you look at him, you know the condition, the difference in condition. That I mean, that show it was. He didn't even have to flex his his chest. His chest was strided all the way through. It just looked like someone else. Ridiculous, yeah. So that's yeah. what uh, Hadi is bringing. Just think about it. Third, fourth, third, first. That's mm -hmm. legitimate. Two twelve guy entering the open division, and and uh, you know pretty much. And all of those placings could be higher. We all mm -hmm. agree. What's yeah. the eighteen? What? He could have won. Yeah, all that stuff. What can Hadi do different though? What do you think, uh, as far as physique wise and uh, conditioning? We know that, but his body. Of I hope he remembers getting bigger is not always better. It's not right. better. But he is bigger and thicker. L look, even if he brings, he, when he stepped on the stage, he was number one, right? Last year. When he stepped on the stage, it was like, whoa, he's off. That, that was that was initial assessment. Oh, he's off. Oh, my God. This is not Hadi that we know, right? But then when they brought him back and they did a few comparisons, he comes, he comes alive. He comes, he got alive. He comes alive. And not just that he comes alive, then he comes like what you said. <laughs> Even his worst condition is better than everybody else. <laughs> I would like to see more upper thigh separation and develop uh, separation. And I would like to keep that waist as as small as possible because I could see him just like expanding because he was he was he I thought he was very effective when Rami when Rami was uh, winning those Olympias I thought he was very effective with his look I just think what year did he come in like two three two days or three days before the Olympia what was that 2020 19 sure. that was two no, years I, ago no 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 19 was when Brandon won yeah, yeah. I think it was two years ago. 2020, yeah, 2020. I think it was 2020, the first time Arami won. He came in and he was way off on Friday. Yeah. And then he came back Saturday. It was like there's like six months in between. Yeah. That's the craziest transformation. But it's obviously just water, but you can see how much water yeah. can change. And that's a feel heat year, right? Uh, at the finals, the uh, second place from every judge. So uh, Hadi, Saturday, when he dropped the water, got the second place, beating Brandon, beating uh, uh, Phil Heath. Yeah, you're right. That's 2020. Oh, no. Phil Heath didn't compete in 2020. Yeah, he did. Phil Heath competed in 21. Yeah. Did, did, did you have... Uh, did you have Hadi losing from the backside with, with uh, uh, last year at the Olympia? When he would, you know, going for one or two, did you have him losing in the back shots or? Oh, he lost that post to Derek. Yes, hundred percent. That's an incredible post did. for Derek. Yeah, but he didn't lose to Derek. He lost the back post. Yeah, right. So he has to improve the back. And I think that's what he did. I think he worked on his back. That, that of course he had to, knowing that Derek is coming with a crazy back. He had to focus on his back. And if he did that. And he could get his back to be as hard as his front. And then Derek needs to have those lines. Derek's Very gonna, well be another be, win another year. Derek needs because how, how do you beat him from the front? Those quads, right? Quad yeah. size, detail, like how do you oh, yeah, phenomenal? Sure. But, Just all up here alone. But, uh, okay. Uh, that, that Derek, did that, though. Derek can bring it. He can bring it. I just yeah, hope he, I just hope everyone. Is dead on. I hope Samson yeah. is dead on. I want to see. I want to see Samson dead on. Chris, we hope for Close. this every fucking year. We hope that everybody. I want to see some pit bulls just. Uh, 
but it never happens. It never happens that everybody's on. It's going to be <laughs> something. Three guys stand out, and now they got to wake up that morning and be there. They got to be. That I wish. Guy. I wish Samson was going to be one of the guys where you said, "Fucking, he nailed it." Yeah, yeah. I, I hope this really. Is the I really wish. Really. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, uh, just, don't let him do, just don't let him do nothing stupid the day off the show. I, I, I feel like people don't, are, are, don't talk about Nick, but I mean, Nick was third. He did beat yeah. Samson. However, Samson beat the Arnold, but it sounded like Nick was trying something different for the Arnold, right? Try to get really sucked down. But seeing Nick's picks, he looks crazy full around, and we know he can come conditioned. So I know, it's but it's like, who, who can improve enough? Um, yeah. What, what, Samson what has a lot of ground to improve. What can Nick do better? That is the good question around it. What can he's he be better? Outsized uh, Samson. I think he, he has the bigger arms, and that's it. Yeah. You know, uh, he's not going to outsize or outshape Samson. You know, this is this is already there. He knows know? that. He knows that. Nick knows he's not out, he's not outshaping Samson, but and Nick outside. has done tremendous things with his physique. Things yeah. that no one, not me, you, neither one of us, ever thought that he could even do it. No, then I got to give him that. I got to give him that, and he is. I don't probably the, when it comes to the, the most confident. I'm not even calling him arrogant because he's not, yeah. but he's confident. He's confident enough to tell everybody, "I'm going to win this thing." He's been saying this every year. I know, but he's putting the work in, you know. And and I, he, Nick is one of the guys. I believe that when he does training clips, I believe he really trains like this. You know, how most people they just do it because it's, it's a video now. I'm going to do this nice, slow, and controlled. I think that's just the way he trains. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm going to grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables. F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. I really believe that. Unless Milos, you know, you see him sometimes oh, training. He is so good. Unbelievable, right? Yeah. So he does everything. He leaves, let's put it this way. He leaves no stone unturned. So a guy like him deserves fucking the best thing possible. Now, there to some guys that he can't beat, even if they're not as hard as him. You know what I mean? Unless they're way off. But this is going to be hard. And and, and as much as I want to put Nick in, in, in somewhere in the top, top two, it's just, I just can't believe that he can slide by Derek. I just can't believe that he can slide by Hardy this year. Okay. And I so, can't believe that he can slide by Samson this year. Uh, let me ask you this. Side chest, side tricep. Abs and thighs and most muscular, these four poses. It's in these four poses. Do you see Derek in top three in those poses? Well, listen, we, we can't go by the Derek from last year. Well, what can you go by? I mean, you have I to go with the, the go best. By the new, we can go by the new Derek. And this okay. is something we can we, this is something yeah. we can discuss on the podcast live at the Olympia. We, we will, we will. At two o'clock. But, but these are kind of things that uh, people overlook, right? They are, that's okay. I said to somebody just the other day that, uh, yeah, I think that Brandon can actually beat uh, Derek. And I, I'm going to probably go this into my new prediction in the moving Brandon. Brandon was dominant and going into last year's Olympia, <laughs> there was a question, can Derek even be compared? Because there is a shape, there is a width, there is X frame, there is everything. Crazy upper body, crazy frontal biceps, crazy lat spread, side poses. Brandon is killing him. Uh, anything. Like. So, which Brandon is coming? The only reason why Brandon, who was winner and then two times runner up, I mean second to Big Rami, so that that was the guy to beat, and then he slipped to the fourth place. Okay, well, and now full year, he had to recover, and he's bringing his best. If uh, Derek and Brandon, just now, Derek and Brandon go on the stage pose by pose, front double biceps, Derek looks great. So is Brandon. Brandon front double biceps is phenomenal. Okay. Last spread. Derek, yeah, he has a nice X-ray taper, 
but it's not happening you know, in the front lot spread of a, of a brand on Jesus Christ. Side triceps, side chest, I mean, we don't even have to discuss. I think that this is a slam dunk that uh, Brandon would beat him, you know, what we've seen so far. And then back double and back lot spread, which could be Derek's poses. A strong poses for Brandon. He's going to... Brandon's got a wide back. Sure. What? Brandon has a hell of a wide back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen... Uh, I, think, I think it's just going to be that uh, uh, Derek is a younger, got that full, hard muscle in the lower half. Full That's muscle. where I think it separates. I don't have my paper here with me now, but it's, you know, I, I hear what you're saying about Brandon, and it makes a shitload of sense. It, it, it makes too much sense. But you, have, but, you didn't your, but you didn't even have him in your top five. I, I, I moved him I moved him the last time and then now I'm gonna move him another notch. Well, so you moved him to fifth, time man. Oh. He's made himself kind of a wild card with dropping back because now you're like, well, this guy's just gotta be in shape and, and kind of prove that back, right? But not his back, but in, you know, I think Brandon very well could win the Olympia. Mm -hmm. When we see the best Brandon, he's that competitive, right? But to see him drop back, it just leaves the question mark against the guys that are very consistent. With what they bring, line got a little blurry. Uh, That's last one year. thing that's holding me back a little bit to put him higher, because he dropped back. He's older. Did he catch up? I mean, everybody looks good. I mean, Brandon looks great every year when they do these gym videos in the in the in the perfect light. He looks unfucking believable. But um, yeah. they keep bring that fucking door frame with them to, to the Olympia <laughs> from twenty feet away. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They can't do that. You know, there's a reason why they do it. And I know I was a master. So <laughs> I'm his top five. A master. But I just can't see him. I can't see him to grow his legs to the point where he can get super shredded and still have his legs. So he That's would have to sacrifice. Crazy. He would have to sacrifice condition to keep his legs full. And then he will get out conditioned by these guys. That's my fear. Yeah, when it comes to round and bubbly muscle, I mean, nobody beats Brandon. And Samson is the only one that can stand next to him when it comes to that. But Samson has the fucking quads of a fucking Godzilla on top of it. And this is what makes it even... This would, I mean, Samson's sweep, the inner and the outer sweep is so fucking crazy. I mean, anybody with big legs next to him looks like he's got no legs. So I think the comparison a lot of people probably want to see is Samson to Andrew Jack. So I think I don't know if that's a comparison that I want to see necessarily. I, I, I mean, don't know. I think yeah. they will be close. I have them outside the top five for me, but that similar frame of that that big okay. guy. And there's some shots where Andrew just really stands out and pops. Absolutely. Andrew's got the best front double in the front last spread. Avon thigh. Avin side thigh. try. But best front but no. first, side first try. His side try. No, no, no. The, what you think of uh, Andrew is a front try, not side try. Front try. Hey, he doesn't they don't want that, that right? Tyler they came out that, saying they don't want that anymore. He yeah. can't do that. So he's going to have to stand to the side. Yeah, yeah. Side triceps of uh, Samson is ridiculous, I promise you. you uh, mark my words. You know when that, you see, that big old hamstring drop and his legs are ridiculous. Uh, chest is here, super flat stomach, and then everything happening. You know, crazy. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, uh, listen, uh, Brandon. Uh, we all love Brandon for for so many years. And when you really put it in perspective, he won. He was second twice in a row. Close. There was a like point difference between him and a big Rami. You know. So consider that. The, well, the second thing, the second year. Yeah. To, the second year, not the first year. He got the uh, two two uh, places two times second. I know. 2020 it wasn't close. 21 it was close. Yeah, 21 was uh, a point uh, between. Uh, 2020, Rami dominated. Uh, that's that was no question. 21, there was uh, you know it could go either way. Man, I want. Yeah. I want to see Rami back. Back. I hope. I hope he can get back to his form of. Uh, I don't know. I just think it was really good for the sport. It was. Well, just, yeah, what? What? Uh, what do you think? What are you hoping for? Just hoping to see, uh, I don't know. I just always, I mean, I'm sure you had this same notion with him. Like, 
I just want to see some shit that's been like, damn, like you waited all your life to see some shit like this. You know? Yeah, but don't you think that 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 shit was 10 years ago? Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just saying, but I always thought he could always do a little bit more. He could be a little bit better if he did. You if know. he would, you said the right thing. He could do a little bit more. Yeah. And if you have to tell someone, you can do more. There's more you can do. What does that tell you? Yeah. So, I mean, listen, I, I think he could, if he would really give it everything. Yeah. He could, right. he could come oh, back. It's hard. It's hard. It's not easy. It's super, super hard, especially when you, you know, Rami is a different person. Rami is, how can I say it? He's um super nice guy. <laughs> oh, too, too nice, number one. But he is, yeah. You, if Rami respects you and, and you tell him something, if and if you keep it real, you tell him, listen, you know, I don't think this is looking good. I think you don't look that that would devastate him. He's literally because <laughs> you should have saw every morning when he, after he woke, he woke up. He's doing his cardio. After cardio, I would make him pose, you know. And now I see him every day pose several times a day. It's not like I'm. Oh. Yeah, I'm I know. In a normal fucking face. I know. He gets destroyed because I'm not like. And, and his friend who was there, every every pose he hit, it was like he fucking hit a slam dunk. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm like, I'm thinking, my, why would he just set the fuck up sometimes and just watch, you know? And then he uh, looks at my face, and when he doesn't see your face that says, great, he was down. But I've done, you know, I've done some posing with Rami. You know, I've done some training with Rami. You know, I've, I've watched him. <laughs> I always thought, like, man, I see, like, so much. He, when he's motivated, Five weeks out. when he's motivated, he can go. Yeah. He, Like, But when there's somebody, when there's a couple of people and, and they, they tell him something that he doesn't like to hear, that can throw a lot of stuff on him. Yeah. Yeah. I told him one time, you still got another set. <laughs> he was like, ah, shit. But he will do it. If he, <laughs> he did it, but he was like, <laughs> He will do it if he respects you. But if he doesn't respect you, he won't do it. Hey, man. <laughs> It's just fucking hard to say. But you seen him close up. You, like, that's some shit. You, it's just like, holy shit. This is what I said in the very beginning. I remember, I'll never forget, after the first New York Pro, we went to Pittsburgh. First time he guest posted in Pittsburgh. I told Jay, I said, wait till you see this guy. Jay hasn't seen him in, li in real life. And we backstage Pittsburgh and everybody's there posing, you know, and, and pumping up. And Jay looked at me, it's like, what the fuck? You know, back then, everything was still full. I mean, everything. Triceps was out He was the widest. The guy, he was like 5'10", five, 5'10 ten, five, ten and a half, but he was the widest person I've seen like that. And then we we, got, we were in New York at Steve's gym, and he was like, Chris, come see him pose. And I was like, yeah, you remember? That was the first time I was like, okay, okay. And I was just like, <laughs> and you looked at me, and my mouth was wide open, like, what in the holy shit? And, but... Dennis, tell back me. Then, think about it. Back then, that was 2013 New York Pro. That's in May, right? He started training three years before that. <laughs> that <laughs> I, I can't even fucking believe this. Oh, so, yeah. uh, it's hard to hear, right? <laughs> uh, started in 2010. Right. I don't know. He, well, he that's, what he said. that's what he says. He started training in 2010, and you see the videos, what he looked like. I got pictures of him before he started training, bro. <laughs> yeah. He put on 100 pounds in the first year. That, that's a tough guy to improve on when you have a mindset where you need that constant, like, positive know, but... encouragement. And also, you just grow like weed looking at weights, like you never had to grind it out. Or I've, never, through, seen anybody, you know? I've never seen anybody respond to a bunch of nothing. And response. Mm -hmm. It was it was crazy. You could see this guy grow. I, he would I, go, I, huh? Okay, but on that Wednesday, like, did you remember? Because I was looking. Every fiber in his leg was fucking on display. Where? At Steve's gym. When you had me posing for me. Oh, he never had, back then, he didn't. Back then, that, that was. At Steve's gym, I saw 
fiber um, in the middle. No, no, no. He had a, a little bit, but he was his separation, especially the deeper lines, wasn't there yet. It was big, fucking round, fucking quads. But the separation, because it was young muscle, it was too young. It looked fucking great, but it was too young. You, know? you see, you never seen anybody respond like this. I'm going to tell you this, John. You probably know the story. Flex Wheeler, 2003, uh, he he trained with me for his uh, Ironman contest, and it was a super short period of time. 2002, he entered the Olympia, supposedly drug free, or, or let's say almost almost drug free, right? But uh, now he lost all the size, and then he comes to my gym. And Chris trained with him a million times before, but I have never seen anything like that. He looked like skinny, fat guy that picks up 20-pound dumbbell. And he looks a certain way before the set. And he looks completely different when we drop that stupid 20-pound dumbbell. It's like, what the hell? And, yeah. you know, chest. It's but it's different if you had that muscle before and you train and it's going to come right back. Yeah, you know, that muscle memory. But still, there are certain things you can expect. And certain <laughs> things, they're just like... You know, dry dropping like what? The genetics. And when guys like us say that, when yeah. you are, and and it's not only one time that I look at Rami and I'm telling myself, it's like, God damn, how can you fucking look like that? You know what I'm saying? I said this so uh, many times. He doesn't even know so how many. many times. So many. Yeah. You know? And, and then, so, but I, I never, but with that being said, I never seen him take that. God, like, I never seen him take that particular look to the stage. Because even when you go to compete, it's a it's a little bit less than what I'm seeing four or five weeks out or three weeks out, like when I was out there in Kuwait or whatever. But it was still more to give. It was more to see and it was more to more to do all the time. It, but it takes the the right combination of everything. And like I said, if you listen to five different people, then what do you expect? Yeah, you're right. um, yeah. it's hard. It's hard because. Somebody tell you, oh, I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do that. And then then in his mind is going, and even if it still follows, but his mind is not in it. If his mind not in it, freak factor was just a freak factor on his fucking on display. Yeah. Shit. Let's see. I'm I'm gonna be I'm I, I want to see what he's doing. If he if he even thinks to coming back and, and do another show. I don't know. I really don't know. I haven't I haven't spoken to him. In a while, and, and I'm definitely not going to ask him if he's going to compete again because Rami doesn't even know what he's going to do. So at this point, we'll have to see. And 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 depending on what's going to happen this year, yeah, this will be the, this will determine if he's even thinking about. But then Dennis, you did retire, and then came out of the retirement. Which year did you retire? How old were you when you retired? And 40, then forty-four. Forty-four. Uh, Chris, how late did you did you compete? Close to the 40 ish, 41 ish. I mean, 40 ish, uh, 2000. Uh, what was the last show? I don't know. It was a, uh, it was a, don't, one. Be, don't be no Silvio now. I went to one in Montreal. Oh, don't you start. Hey, did, I was, <laughs> 2007, right? Went, 2007, the yeah. Because then I went to the show. No. Two thousand seven. I didn't give you insulin that you were waiting for me. <laughs> yeah, was that two thousand seven? Yeah, yeah. you kick me around. <laughs> hey, John, he had me in a fucking in the, in the in the lobby for like two hours waiting for his ass to bring. Were you playing out of the top ten? I was like, man, I'm walking. I'm going around town trying to find some shit from the locals. <laughs> hey, hold on a second. But, but my point there was, <laughs> but. Huh? Uh, you believe how that, John? Old you, Chris? Chris, how old are you? 56? Yeah. 56? You had to think about it for a second. Yeah. 56. Oh, you just turned you just turned 56, right? August, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He went and got them Gucci shoes and all that Gucci shit. Remember, Milos? He's <laughs> yeah. over 40 years old anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that, that's right. You know, yeah. Did, did Milos did Milo send you the video of Silvio's client? No. Yeah, I did on the, on the, uh, Instagram. Dennis, did you say you were 34 or 44? Who? 44. 44. When you quit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, the, yeah, John, the reason why I'm saying is, uh, you know, you at 36 now? What? 37. 37. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, save your muscles, right? Don't do anything crazy and you can have longevity. I mean, 
for, for 40s nowadays uh, like it used to be 20s you know if you save and you're very smart with your training you can be one of those dexter jacksons competing in the into the 50th year i mean your oh. body looks fresh it doesn't look that you did uh, you have any injury? <laughs> you did show it to the kid. Hey, Chris, I mean, it with the best. <laughs> listen to this. I got to bring this up. I got to bring this up because you can't even make this shit up. <laughs> with the best. I know. I know. I'm my trainer and I'm proud. What you say? I'm training with the best. Six-time Mr. Olympia is my trainer, and I'm proud. <laughs> it was Too bad you can't see it in the camera. Trainer, Why? And I'm proud. You can't because of ah, damn. What? Six-time Six Mr. Olympia. What? <laughs> yeah, John doesn't this know. Dude is, this yeah. dude is so full of himself. Man, yeah. he will, I mean... Uh, he was probably also the uh, Olympic gold medalist too, right? Yeah. Turn yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah. And with the best, six-time Mr. Olympia is my trainer, and I'm proud. Look at him. Ah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> you lying sack of Dorian Yates. <laughs> yeah, you lying sack of Dorian Yates. Come on, man. Why would you let somebody oh. say that? I'd be like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But she didn't know. She probably told her she, he's six time Mr. Olympic. Wow, and smiling. She Come said on, the business Phil. card. Dennis, she said the business card. Do you remember? <laughs> but the business card said five. Five, five times. Five. five. more. So you won one more time after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Jim. Listen, uh, I can't let you guys go without getting y'all's prediction. Oh. I need to get my paper real quick. Hold on one second. I don't have the old one. He's going to ask me again to be first. Because <laughs> you're the best, John. You're the best, Milo. <laughs> but I tell you this. If you really, really analyze, really analyze through all the filters and then to each poses, you know, I, I, I think, okay, here it is. Milos, I have everything, everyone. Yeah, all this. Uh, you, so you yeah, can't see it with my damn. John, what are you, what are you training out what there? Are you huh? I was saying, John. What are you actually, doing? actually, Chris, I met you like in 2016, I think it was at the Muscle Factory. Uh, Roland oh, yeah. Gonzalez owns the gym. You oh, came okay. down there. You uh, you gave me some shit on my posing you know, <laughs> before I did USA. <laughs> 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 it was like actually it. about my waist too. Was like it? Four times they're like, you guys suck that in, John. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my right, thing, right. too, man. I, I, I saw you did some uh, some tutoring on that, some tutorials on that. I you did. I, I, had, I, had to, I had to get learned. I had to get schooled because I wasn't oh, doing yeah. it right. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. That's what's up. Hey, right, man, you, I'm not trying to help, start. man. That's why I'm here. Today we're going to start with Chris. Chris. Yeah, yeah. Chris, <laughs> then we're going to go with John. Oh, good. Then Milos. Okay. And then myself. Okay, Chris, do you need a, a reminder of what you did last week? Yeah. Last week you had Derek winning, Hardy second, Samson third, Nick fourth, Andrew fifth, and Hunter Labrada sixth. I'm going to put... Uh, I'm gonna put. You're gonna lose one or two friends. That's okay. I'm gonna put. Uh... <laughs> it's like goddamn crazy. Five weeks. He never had. Never once had me in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna talk to you. <laughs> Dexter, I remember Dexter. I made predictions one time, and Dexter called me. Hey, man, I thought we were boys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't That's think tough. I was going to be with boys. <laughs> I got Brandon. In, uh, I'm going to put Brandon back in up there. Uh, okay, let's let's start with first. Okay. Uh, Chris, we still have two more. Can we go Hardy? back with Hadi? Hadi, okay. He's looking more mature to me, man. It's for some reason. You don't have to explain it. These are going way more mature. Okay. So, second, Derek. Derek? 
still, still got Derek's uh, second, Samson third. Shit. I don't want to put Nick too far down because Nick Nick is a uh, Nick Nick's gonna have to be after there. Too far down. I mean out of the top three, how much fuck can he go? He's always gonna be around that area. He's not gonna be too far lower than that. Um I think Nick and then uh Samson. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry, not sorry, not Samson, I'm sorry. Another black guy. Uh Nick. <laughs> <Andrew>. <laughs> was, uh, so Nick and Andrew. Uh, yeah, Andrew. And then Brandon. And then Brandon. Oh, you're putting Brandon in the top six now for the first time. Yeah. So you try to make it back to Kuwait, don't you? Shut your mouth. <laughs> so, okay, uh, I didn't get it. Say it again. You're you trying to make it back. <laughs> what did the Chris say? Hardy first? Hardy, Derek. Derek? Hardy, Derek, Nick. Samson, Nick, Andrew, Brandon. Okay. Okay. John, it's all you. The floor is I, yours. I got this. So I'm pretty close. Uh, I would have Derek, then Hottie, then Samson, then Nick, then Brandon, then Andrew. Yeah, he's. Uh... I do. I do be putting. Uh, I'm. I'm. I mean. I, it's, I just gotta be. Now, I'm making yeah. you question your choices, Chris. Solid. Is I, go back solid and forth. I go back and forth. Yeah, I mean, yeah I just, easily these guys could get shifted around. They're I, all, I want to see. Really yeah, <laughs> but, but, John, we just go back and forth, forth, man. Doing this for fun. The fans should not take us serious, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get mad at us. We, we just we got to we got to put it out there. Well, uh, I, I do want to give a first. The biggest credit to most consistent guy, uh, Hadi Chupan, and a champion. And he is the one that, uh, you know, should be dethroned. And could anybody dethrone him? I think that Samson can on on uh, all the points of, you know, size, width, height, height thickness, uh, muscular, muscularity, density, everything. He's going to lose in conditioning department. Any which way Samson's going to look, you know, Hadi has a conditioning on his own. Yeah, we already established this. But that's not going to be enough to beat, just like Brandon used to beat uh, uh, Hardy on the shape and, uh, and and everything else. I do think that Samson's winning and uh, Hardy's going to be second. And it's going to be one of those memorable battles. Yeah. I, was, I was seeing uh, uh, Derek third, but uh, uh, when I consider everything that I did, pose by pose, uh, I actually see Brandon jumping all the way to the third. And Brandon is very similar to Samson as well. The the world would like to see them together being compared, and I think that's going to happen. And that as, as this is happening, it's going to probably be in that uh, you know top six, but then uh, narrow down to top three. So I'm bumping uh, Brandon all the way to, to third. Mm -hmm. Fourth, Derek. Now, again, I love Derek <laughs> because everybody's, I'm Nick Hader. Now I'm going to be Derek Hader by, by saying this. Derek, since he won 2021. White people. Just tell the truth. What? Huh? You just hate white people. That's all. Yeah, that's, 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 that's uh, I guess. I didn't, I didn't realize. But, but, you know, really, to put things in perspective, a lot of people are overlooking certain things. Derek shocked the world. When he stepped on that stage and opened up and had that frontal expose, and everybody was, what the hell? Right? They didn't see that there was no hardness here. You know, there is no shoulders, chest, uh, arms, you know, abs. There was, you know, way right. under part. You know, so we think structure is there. Oh my God. And he lifts his arms, frontal biceps, great. Yeah. He turns to the side, okay, you know, not much happening, but okay, he can pass. That's why I say he's not the top three in the side poses. He's not the top five in the side poses. Okay, this is my bold statement. In the side poses, he could not, uh, you know, crack a top five. Good, so now but he's in four. On the now back, he dominates, and that's going to be like, whoa, he dominates right there. 
It's a showstopper. He's going to pull that thing, right? So he's going to gain a lot of points. But then he's going to still have to turn to the side triceps, abs and thighs, and most muscular. It's just not top three for me in any of those poses. So I could see Brandon, after a year of layoff, after a mistake he did last year, you know, he lost a separation on his quads. Uh, his squads were not small last year. This, this is, I'm going to tell you, uh, even Samson sent me some picture of a uh, lineup. His, Brenner's legs from the side are blurry. Not, it was just blurry. Blurry, yeah. So he can find that happy medium. And now when you see him under that special light, whatever, and the stairs and all this stuff, and the, they have some sunlight, the probably the, the uh, gold or bronze fucking light, you know, to reflect. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I think Brandon, two times runner-up, champion before, has all the attributes, shape, size, ooh, wow poses. He's gonna he's gonna squeak in there. He's not gonna be big enough and dominant enough to to take over uh, Samson. And uh, I think that Hardy improved to the point he's not gonna beat him. Third is Brandon. Fourth is Derek. I still no. said that Nick is gonna overpower. Andrew Jack. And Nick, Nick, Nick is going to be super, super powerful. Super, right? But again, it's not going to outsize uh, Samson. He can outshape this, uh, these guys. So, you know, that, that's why I see him fifth. And I still see Andrew Jack sixth over Labrada, even though I haven't seen much of Labrada lately. I haven't seen much of Andrew. We just know what Andrew looks like. And like John... John is like every bodybuilder's bodybuilder, right? We love when uh, Samson and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Andrew stand up front and you see the structure is there, the width is there, you know, height is there. There's so many comparables. I think that uh, when he turns to the side, you can see that, oh, now he's a little lengthy. He doesn't have a, that thickness of the tree trunks of the legs that uh, Samson has. So... This is again, Samson, Hardy, Brandon, Derek, Nick, Andrew. All right, noted. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. I'm sticking to Derek winning. Uh, what? I'm sticking to Derek in number one, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Derek got first place votes last year, where he wasn't what Milo said. He didn't have all that. He still got first place votes, so yeah. now I'm, I'm, I'm so much. I'm 100 convinced he's gonna come better than yeah. last year, bigger, fuller, more detail. Maybe not. He's not gonna be hardy up here, but he's gonna have everything else for the judges to say he is much improved. And I guess in this sport, this is what it's all about. It's all about being improved. So, hardy. I think Hardy is going to be Hardy. We already know what to expect. We expect him being peeled out of his mind. But I think that if Milos focuses really on his condition and don't worry about an extra five pounds. Oh, that, that's, that's, you can bank on it. He doesn't need to, you know. But I'm banking on it. I got Samson in second again. I got Hardy in third. I got Brandon in fourth. I got Andrew in fifth and Nick in sixth. Yeah. And I'm only I'm only basing this off uh, what you said. Who can I beat? Oh, Nick, who why? Because he can't beat him because the shape, he can't beat him because of this. So and if you look at all the guys before him. On paper, he can't beat him. Let me let me tell you this. I'm 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 on the I'm on I'm I'm on the same bus as you with Nick. I mean, I'm sorry with um, uh, Derek. With Derek, I think Derek's gonna be way better, and I do think Derek's gonna win it. But right now, today, today, I'm putting Heidi there because right now I'm seeing a lot of maturity out of Heidi and uh, out of his physique from what I've seen of it. 
But wait, wait. Just say, I know. I'm, I'm talking about this. I'm talking about off of your thing. But I'm no, talking no, about no. what you said. But did you hear hey. what you just said? You said, I do think hey. Nick, is going to, hey. I do, Nick is going to win. I mean, Derek is going to win. But I'm, I'm going probably going to end up there before before we go to, to, to <laughs> Orlando. But what I'm telling you is, <laughs> Hadi, like you say, Hadi is Hadi. But if you don't watch those little things, you got he's gonna have to really go for more shape because it's not gonna be going for the, the size is not gonna help. And it's not gonna be putting on weight because weight is not gonna help. Because we all saw that with, with Ronnie Coleman. When he came down, he even looked even bigger. All right, right. Not about the scale. And if you look at Samson, we all know we love that look from the front. He's just no, he's he's hanging with anybody in the world in the front, <clears throat> and his last spread has came up to par in my eyes. Back to a bicep from side to side needs more width. That's 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 the coming uh, determining factor. But when he gets that width, I think that's going to catapult him to first place. For losing a back double bicep, suppose he loses the match. I mean, let's. Well, yeah, it could be. Listen, when you, it can knock you out, just like what Ronnie was doing. It, it can knock you out. Yeah, it's lights out. It's yeah, one, one out of eight coaches. Okay, no, and I don't want to be a biased coach. Unfortunately, oh. uh, no, no, I don't want to be a biased coach. I want to be an analyst. And you guys, and especially John is here as, as a new guy, so you can listen. Let's look at size filter. Size, okay? We have a. 300 pounder that stood next to Big Rami and hold his own against 212 competitor. First size, open 212. That's the first filter, okay? Muscularity, size, density, okay. Balance, upper body, lower body. Everybody from the judges last year said that, ooh, Derek needed more legs, okay? He needed more arms. And then you know, when you look at the balance front to back, he is one person from the front, completely other from the back, okay? He impresses from the back, but this is balance filter, okay? Now you go to the shape, shape. He, that, that's a, a Lee Haney reincarnation coming with the 50 pounds more. So if we didn't know about the Samson Deuda, and I tell you just now, okay, you know, this guy is coming. Lee he, just what like, was Lee Haney's strongest part? Sorry? Lee Haney is back, yeah, okay. But so, look, how you, so how can you make a comparison with Lee Haney? It's you know Lee when, Haney, when, when Samson's weakest body part is his back. Lee Haney himself compared it. I understand that, but maybe he was just so, nice. Yeah, what I, I'm I saying is, uh, if if but, you want to, if I would compare him to Lee, I would have to compare him that he has this back. There is a lot of resemblance, you know. I agree with the, you. I yeah, agree with Lee you. Without, Lee without that back and now without that lat spread was was he's not Lee. You know, yeah, <laughs> but the, you know his. That, I'll you know, give you that, but but still, there is a lot of resemblance. I mean, uh, this it is, is, it is, it is. especially when well, he's standing there like that. It, it's a lot of. What we're talking about? Um, we're talking about a six foot, uh, five foot six, right? We, who's we five six? about all this. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> still, I mean, there. I thought Lee Haney was by like who's five six? Uh, he's <laughs> title one, right? <laughs> the, no, 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 Derek. Guys, last question for John before we go. Yeah. Out of the whole roster in the open class right now, who is your favorite physique and why? Yeah. Doesn't have to yeah. be anybody in the top five. If you, if you, who is your, when you look at this body, said this is the body that I would like to have. Man, got to go through that list. It's, uh, it's tough because there is a there is a bias there from being just a shorter guy that you have already your 212 favorites. So like my immediate reaction is Derek. Because he has so many attributes that are, are nice with the taper, his waistline, the roundness. Um but at the same time, it's like like, damn, it'd be pretty cool to be over six feet tall. <laughs> you know? And it's like there's a, a Samson would be a pretty ideal physique, man, to be that big and have all the shape and structure and lines. Like, hmm. so if you have to choose one now, which one would yeah. you? Yeah. 
Yeah, they got to pick Samson. Yeah. I want to I want to be over 6 feet tall. There we go. The <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I will say my biases were Derek because that's where like hey, 212 give hope to the short guys. You want to see someone with a similar structure of like height do well. Um but like as just a physique to have. Yeah, who Samson for sure. <laughs> I, I would like to see a hybrid between Samson and, and Andrew Jack. Okay. Because yeah, the, it's an Andrew, they, they, they are so similar, but it, but still so different. It's crazy. Yeah. But I like the I, I, what I like on Andrew is when he stands there. I don't know why. And your eyes just keeps going to him. It's all this 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 music going on that you just want to keep looking at Andrew. You get that yeah. midsection. It's his midsection just draws. Fucking ridiculous. Your, your eyes, yeah. like everything's popped so much. Um, Why is it? Well, you see, that's probably because of martial arts. You guys think martial arts has something to do with the midsection, especially when you do a lot of kicks. Your abs, it's just, it's just, look at Flex had a great midsection. You know, these guys just have great midsections. I know the guy that had a good midsection. Right yeah. You also, Mills had a great midsection. But, but, I'm, but I tell you this, when you have a Two seconds to glance and, and look away. And uh, what, what are you going to notice when you uh, two second glance? The midsection right here. Shoulders, abs, legs, right? This is it. And that's what Hadi Chupan does. Hadi uh, uh, creates his crazy abs. I mean, I was doing uh, relaxed uh, with abs. Um, Chris Cormier wasn't. He was usually spreading the lats, right? And he had this tiny waist and he had a Deep abs stretched anyway. I don't think you see this is what Max Charles made a mistake at uh, at um, uh, Masters at the Masters. Oh, Masters. He would he would open up that front of legs like that's not you. It looks like eh, okay, we be tapered, but you lose that trademark crazy abs. You know that's what Hadi has. Hadi is so impressive in front of legs. Shoulders look wide and everything else because when you turn this way. Sometimes you lose that shoulder width, right? Mm -hmm. So he had a shoulders and he had a abs. Uh, Derek has to stretch because he has no abs. So he has to stretch. So you always work to the favor. But uh, as you're saying, why midsection, six little muscles at the uh, center of the body is so visible in transitions, in, in the lineup. This is what they're going to be looking for. So uh, John... Okay. Johnny is a perfect uh, uh, presenting his abs and tutorial for your abs. Everybody should see that video. Tom, will you be in Orlando? Uh, no, no, I, I won't be. We decided to to not head out there. Oh, okay. Because I was just about, I was just going to invite you to come on one of the live podcasts we're doing out there. Oh, that that would have been uh, it would have been a pleasure, but yeah, we we're not coming out. So, all right, cool. Maybe we can get you on after your next um, open open show. That that'd be awesome. I, I appreciate you making the time, brother. Thank you so much. Milos, Chris, like always. Much Bye, love. Thanks for having me. I'll let Chris go back to work because his eyes is doing this already. I mean, I'm the one talking. <laughs> 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 You're going to sleep. Hey, guys. I'm going to go sleep. Yeah, take care, guys. All right, guys. Bye-bye. All right, John.